I never held my daughter. They took her from me on the surgeon's table. I tried to fight, but they are many, and I am weary. Then they dragged me away, split our three hearts apart. They have taken me to a hidden vale where ancient ruins stand. They tell me if I cooperate, I will see my family again. I will never trust these monsters, but I do not have a better plan. There are curious flowers here. Exposure to the pollen has left my captors rattled, and they will go no further than our little outpost. They brought me here in the hopes that my expertise in botany would help them find a counter-agent. <laughs> At last, the state has a use for me. I nod and smile. I play the part. But they cannot break me again. For my daughter. For Ivan. I will live. Someone's been in here, recently. Building on top of the ruins. What do you see? Some sort of makeshift distillery. It smells just like the flowers. Shit! Of course! She's refining the pollen, weaponizing it. There's no magic here, Nadia, just someone very clever. Wait, but... If it is just a person, then wouldn't the pollen affect her too? If she can resist it somehow, then so can we. Maybe I can connect it to that rope spool. It's been weeks since these bastards dragged me from the Gulag, from Ivan and my daughter, to this strange vale. They have tasked me with finding some way of counteracting the unusual effects of the pollen that hangs in the air. Now I believe I have a formula that may work. An extract from the seed pods of the plant. The liver of animals that consume the flowers and have metabolized the toxins. A phenothiazine derivative. The last ingredient is a risk. They have it in large quantities around the Gulag, where it is used as an insecticide. It may also act as a rudimentary antipsychotic, bearing a chemical similarity to other compounds I have studied. Or it may be poisonous. I will try the mixture on myself tonight. I found something. One of the prisoners wrote down a formula that might counteract the effects of the pollen. It has to be for my grandmother. The witch killed her, and now she's going to help save Grandpa, just like in one of his stories. Uh, Nadia. Have faith, Laura. Hop back to the Soviet installation where we met. I'll help you find what you need. for Nadia's grandfather. I barely escaped with my life. It was like a fairy tale.
All right, Nadia, I'm back at the installation. Any advice on where to start looking? Okay, first, the seed pods. The flowers grow inside the caves around there. There's never enough of them to make you sick, so you should be able to gather some safely. The livers should be easy. The deer around there feed on the flowers, so you'll just need to track them down. As for the insecticide, I have an idea where we might find some. Grandpa taught me to read Russian, so I'm going through some old equipment manifests to see if I can find out where they stored it. I'll let you know when I find it. All right, I'll start gathering the other supplies now. the flowers. Just need the seed pods now. <sighs> Laura, I got something you'll want to hear. I'm patching you in. Bravo team is still MIA. We haven't got any transmissions since the distress call. We're gonna need to send a rescue party. Finish up your patrol around the Soviet installation. See if you can pick up the native girl's trail. She's involved in Bravo's disappearance somehow. And we need better intel before we send more of you in there. Copy that. Can you get somewhere safe? I'm in one of those old safe houses and I have snares set outside. Worst case, there's a tunnel underneath I can use to escape, but I still need to finish going over the manifest. Is this... normal for you, Laura? I'm not used to it. You know, people trying to kill me. I don't think it's something you can get used to. Just... stay safe. Damien, the Prophet's Forge. Cities are not built on plans alone. There must be material, and there must be someone who knows how to build. Damien was that man. They say he could muster brick from nothing more than a handful of dirt and a tinderbox. They say his craftsmanship was divinely inspired. It is his hand that gave form to the architect's dreams.